Today we're going to be assembling the Woodwind Pro 24. Now if you're the proud owner of a 36, the steps are exactly the same, so just follow along and let's get into it. When you open up the box, lay out all of your parts so you can see everything that you're going to need for assembly and it'll make assembly go that much quicker. So most of your pieces and parts are going to be in box two. So open up box two first and that's where you're going to find all these boxes like this and most of your parts are going to be in, in these interior boxes. So inside one of your parts boxes, you will find your Woodwind Pro assembly manual. You can follow along here. We're going to be going through it step by step in this video. But one thing to watch out for is in your hardware bag, each individual step is individually bagged. And so this is for step four. And if you look inside the manual and you can see if you go to step four, it calls for eight of these bolts and there's eight bolts in this bag. So it's really easy to follow along. And one thing you could do is lay these out in numerical order and then it's really easy to grab those those parts as you need them throughout the assembly process so to make the assembly process go smoother we have designed the packaging to be a spot for you to to assemble your grill so cut all the tape on this box and it just opens up and then we're actually going to assemble the grill right here on this cardboard piece first part of the assembly process is going to be assembling the legs so in order to do that we're going to tip the grill back on the cardboard We'll assemble the legs, then lift it up and do the rest of the assembly. Now, if you ordered the 36, it's really nice to have a friend help you out because the 36 can be a little heavy, especially when you're lifting it back up. So what you're going to do is keep some of this cardboard right here on the back and you can just roll this back that way. We now have access to the bottom of the grill and we can assemble the legs. The way that these legs go on the grill is they just slide right on top and then there's four holes for the bolts on the sides. So I like to get a few finger tight just to hold the leg in place. Okay, we're gonna install these bolts here and we're gonna tighten them up, but we're not gonna go super tight at this point of the assembly process. You're gonna want a little bit of movement in this leg when we assemble the brace in the bottom shelf. So remember this cardboard that we put here and rolled the grill back onto? The reason you're gonna want that is because when you're assembling these back legs, it gives you the height to install the bottom legs without having to tip the grill back even more. The next step, if you're following along in the manual, is step four, which is to install these braces between the front and back legs. Now this is where the movement in the legs is gonna come in handy because it's gonna allow you to align these holes a little bit easier than if you were to tighten those up in step three. And as you're installing this, you're gonna wanna make sure that these holes are facing inward because that's where the bottom shelf is gonna go in step six. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to tighten these screws up, securing the brace to the leg, and you can go all the way tight on these ones. There's no need for any movement in the brace. With the braces installed, you are now ready to move on to step five, which is installing the casters or the wheels on the bottom of the grill. With the casters installed, you're now ready to install the bottom shelf. Now the bottom shelf is inside of a box that's found in the chamber of your grill. So you're gonna to need to open that up and pull that box out. Now, one thing to note is that these have an angle to them. The angle needs to go to the front or the back of the grill. And so as you're installing this, this will go this way. The other one will come on top of that. Now that the legs and the shelf and the brace, now that that's all assembled, we can tighten up the screws that we had up here at the top of the legs. And then we're gonna lift the grill up and continue on with the assembly. At this point in the assembly process, we're done assembling the legs. We're gonna lift the grill up, assemble the hopper and all the internals. Now, one trick is to lock your bottom wheels. That way it's easier to lift up and you're gonna want a friend to do this. The next step is to install the ash cleanout mechanism. Now, in order to do that, we need to pull out the smoke box assembly so that we can have access to the bottom of the chamber. And so the way you do that is you're gonna pull you're gonna pull the smoke box out and then you're gonna pull this out. And that gives us access to the bottom of the chamber to install this piece. In order to install this, you need to remove this flange and then you're gonna put the rod through this hole in the chamber right there and put the flange back on on the outside of the grill. 
So with the ash cleanout mechanism installed in the chamber, we can now install the hopper. If you're following along in the manual, we're on step 10. At this point, it's also helpful to have a friend who can hold the hopper in place while it's being secured to the chamber. Okay, we're gonna install the internal probe. You're gonna come up through this hole. It goes right up here, and then in this step, you have this bracket, and that's gonna go with the brace closest to the grill wall, and it just assembles with these two small screws. Now we're gonna use the four screws included in step 12 to secure the hopper to the body of the grill. The next step is to install the two screws that secure the auger assembly to the bottom of the chamber. Step 13, if you're following along in the manual. So you're gonna to wanna to tighten these screws, but don't go too tight because you don't wanna pinch this assembly right here, preventing it from sliding in and out. The next step is to install this plate over the hole where the wire is coming in for the internal probe. Now, as you do this, make sure you don't pinch the wire. You're gonna to wanna to be able to slide it in and out a little bit. It helps to install one side first, and then you can align the wires and secure the other side. Next, we can reinstall the heat deflector, then the grease tray, followed by the lower grates. And now we're ready to install the upper grates. In order to install the upper grates, we are going to put them here with the smaller slot on top. The screw, will, the screw will come in from the outside, secured with a nut. And repeat the process on the other side. With the side rails installed, you can now insert the upper grill grates. And as a note, this right here is gonna be the bottom. So you're gonna want the piece that goes all the way to the edge to be the top. With the internals of the grill assembled, we're now ready to turn our attention to the outside of the grill. So we're on step 20. We kind of blew through a couple steps really quickly right there, but we're on step 20 if you're following along in your manual, which is installing the handle on the lid. Now there's two wing nuts here. You're gonna to wanna to remove those wing nuts, but you're gonna keep those screws in place. We're gonna use those to attach the handle to it. Don't forget about the step 20 bag. It's got two bezels in it where the handle is gonna nest against the grill. Now one pro tip is to install these one at a time because these screws, these wing nuts are also holding this piece in on the bottom of the lid. So doing it, doing it one at a time keeps it secure while you're installing the handle. Now we're ready to reinstall the smoke box and the handle that controls the butterfly valve. Now, in the manual, you're gonna see that this step is 21 and then the handle is 22. Before you install this, make sure that your butterfly valve is in the right position, which is flat and flush with the heat diffuser. The reason why you wanna do that is so that when you install your handle, you can be confident that the butterfly valve is in the right position relative to the, where, the, where the handle will be on the outside of the grill. So remember to pull out the flange, reinstall the smoke box, and push those in together. And with this in the right position, you are now ready to install the handle. And as you get this too tight, make sure that you're not putting too much pressure on the handle so that it adjusts where that butterfly valve is. And then you can get your set screw, put that on the bottom of the handle and secure it in place to the rod that is controlling the butterfly valve. And make sure that's pretty snug. You don't want that to come loose. With the smoke box assembly back in place, we are ready to install these knobs, which are gonna go on the pellet dump feature as well as the ash dump feature. So the ash dump feature is right here on the side of the grill. You're gonna screw that on right there, slide that back in and you're good to go. The pellet dump feature will be right here on this side of the grill. You're just gonna tighten that onto the grill. We're on step 24, which is assembling the side shelf. Now, if you purchase the sidekick when you bought your grill, you're going to install your sidekick in place of this side shelf. So don't install this, otherwise you're gonna have to take it off in order to put your sidekick on. 
Now, one easy way to do this is to make sure that you assemble this first screw first, and that'll just make it so much easier to level out the side shelf and line up the holes properly. After the middle one's installed, you can move to the other screws. The last two steps, the grill is all assembled. Now we're just installing the grease cup and the ash cup. The grease cup goes over here on the right side of the grill, right there on the grease spout. The ash cup goes underneath the grill, just like that. Your Woodwind Pro is fully assembled and you're ready to start cooking. For ideas of what to cook, check out our YouTube channel.